Ah, it's a great day. Number 28. Via ser un gran dia. About 10 years ago, Beth and I had the chance to go through the mother route, the mother road, Route 66. And we did in a 69 Chevy Impala convertible. That's so much fun. And matter of fact, my hat, the Roadkill restaurant, was one of our last stops. So also we're going for the next series, which is gonna be trucks. And Beth did a workshop about two weeks ago for one day that we've continued. And so we're gonna be calling it Keep On Trucking. So stay tuned. Live from Pine Top, Arizona, it's that painting show starring the color queen. Here's Betty. Hello folks. I'm Beth Zink. Welcome to day 28 of that painting show. Betty's John's nickname for me. <laughs> Not the most complimentary. <laughs> but anyway, he uh, he's always always has a lot of nicknames for me, some nicer than others. But Welcome to our show, day 28. We're excited to do something new and different. Actually, I've never painted an old truck before, so this will be fun. But first, Dr. John, who is today's lucky duck? The lucky duck is KC from North Carolina. KC well, from North Carolina. Duck you, mail. Duck mail used to be KC from Arizona. Anyway. She says, Mike and I love watching your show. It's the happiest thing to tune into. I have to say, John and I have had so much fun making fools of ourselves. I appreciate it. I'm glad this is an unintended consequence of what we're doing. But during uh, the virus, all this nonsense, craziness, whatever, not nonsense, it's a real thing. Um, we're, we're happy to be helpful. So... We'll keep on being silly. As John said a few weeks ago, I taught a painting workshop on vintage trucks. One of my students asked if we could, I could do that, and I said, I've never painted an old truck before. I, you know, I'm, I'm into nature, landscapes, cactus flowers, all that sort of stuff. Um, so we have a photographer friend, John Albin, who lives up here in Pine Top, and I asked him if he could get some old truck photos and or car photos for us for the workshop. This was my favorite that he took and it was from um, someplace, John, where was it from? Actually, it's uh, in a mining town in Congress, Arizona, Congress, which is Arizona, south okay. of uh, Prescott. Okay, so he went and took this picture and I want, what I wanted to talk to you about before I get started painting is how you use a resource photo. This is my photo. You can see it. Uh, there's a, a bunch of old, um, it's kind of like in a junkyard uh, on some, somebody's property. And there's like an air conditioner or an old pop top, whatever, all kinds of crazy stuff. And this over here was some old uh, dish TV things or direct dish, you know, satellite TV things. And I thought they, they reminded me of an agave, so I changed them into an agave. So, as you use a resource photo, you don't have to uh, read it uh, totally literally, if you know what I'm saying. I'm also not going to put all this garbage over in here and wear this old air conditioner thing, whatever it is, in front. I'm going to put in a prickly pear. I'm going to use that tree, which I started to do. I love the sky. It was a real foreboding kind of dark sky. And so I've kind of made it a little bit more close up than the original photo. Got the agave in, got rid of the air conditioner. I'll be sketching in. And you know what I love to use to sketch is a, uh, a chalk pencil. Chalk or chalk pencil. So what I think I'll do here is I'll put, since we're thinking it's going to be, it's here in Arizona, I'm going to throw in a a prickly pear cactus on this side. We're talking about composition here. It also helps me because guess what? I can't see 
the bumper of this truck. And I can't, I don't know what they look like exactly or how far they go out. So what's wonderful about acrylic painting is you can hide anything with another layer of paint. So if you don't like something in your sky, throw a cloud in it. I'm going to cover up what I can't see here with a prickly pear cactus. So I sketched this with my chalk pencil and then I realized I wasn't quite quite accurate. So I have redrawn some of the lines here with my chalk pencil and I'm going to show you what I'm going to fix here. I'm going to start up here where I did not make the windows large enough. See the, the scale isn't quite right. By the way, Betty, yeah. <laughs> Let me give you some info of interest. I Maybe I'm sure you know already, it's a 53 Chevy truck with a Series 3100 half-ton load. And it weighed 3,200 pounds. Wow. You know, um, I was never into pickup trucks. I was always into cars, though. I loved cars. I still love cars. I guess I think of them as sculptures. A funny story, when I was a little girl in first grade, I don't remember it, but my element, my teacher reminded my mother of it. I said, in first grade uh, in North Situa, Rhode Island, I said, oh, Mrs. Smith, I love your car. And she said, what? I was six years old. The wind, we were on the second floor of an old brick building and, and looked down at the street and her 1954 baby blue and white Studebaker with a bullet nose in the grill was out front. And I said, I really love your car. And Mrs. Smith, <laughs> the only reason I know is Mrs. Smith made a note to my mother. She said, I've never had a six year old that cared about my vehicle. <laughs> I guess it's because I was an artist. It was, to me, it looked like a sculpture. It was beautiful. So ever, ever since then, I've been nuts about cars. Okay, another question. In a good condition today, what would the price for a truck, 53 Chevy truck? Oh, you mean restored? Like, like you're looking up, yeah, restored. Oh. You know, that, that whole world of restoration blows me away. When we go to Barrett Jackson and, and see, the, see the cars that go for what they do, no idea. Tell me. Well, let me tell you what uh, original price was. $1,407. <laughs> no, this 1953. Was, this is what, 70, almost 60, 50, 70, 67 years. The... Today's in good condition, 86,000 buckos. Oh, that's got to be restored. Of course. Yeah, okay. Of course. By the way, I am using, um, I use Payne's Gray up here. Now I'm using some alizarin crimson. You know, I love that color, alizarin crimson. It's a really beautiful red violet. And I'm adding a little bit of cadmium red light to it to brighten it because I'm trying to get these real bright, I mean, there's a million colors in this, uh, in this truck. There's, I mean, with all the, the rust uh, and the changes in color here. Wow. This is going to be fun. It won't be done today, trust me. But see how I just brightened that up? Brightened it way up. It looks good. Thanks. You know, you really have to kind of pay attention. I always like to say, just paint what you see, no thinking. If you paint what you see and you see some little weird, uh, like I'm seeing some little weird shapes here uh, going across the, the top of this hood. It's a weird little shape. I'm just going to paint it because I see it. I see another one back in here. So when you're painting... Don't think too much, really. Just concentrate, try to 
get yourself in the zone. You know what I'm saying? Of course. Just like athletes do, right, John? <clears throat> Gotta get in the zone. All right, I have another question or informative. The uh, Bring it on. The truck series 3100 was called a stove bolt. It had a uh, six cylinder. And let me ask you, how many horsepower do you think? <laughs> I don't know. A couple hundred? Well, in, in 53, it had 92 horsepower. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. I'm adding a little bit of white to the alizarin crimson here on this side because I can see where the light is hitting it. It's a little... A little bit lighter. There's so many nuances of color in this. It's, you know, when you're painting something that, that's rusted, look, you have the coral, you have the red violet, you have the silver, you have green, you have yellow, you have orange. I mean, I might start painting more old vehicles. This is fun. Come down here and kind of get some of this white underneath the headlight. How are we doing on time, Dr. John? I think we're looking at about, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes. Okay, maybe we ought to. But two, there's a lot of competition between Ford and Chevy uh, <laughs> in the early times. Sure. But Chevy was the top seller of the time. Really? Before World War II. Now, did but Ford was first, but Chevy was better. Well, it became a top seller, so to speak. Yeah, Ford was out first. Old Henry Ford. What did he say? You can something about I'll make him any color you want, but it's always going to be black. There's some comments. Yeah, I could think of a lot of things. There are some comments about. Oh, I know. You can have any color you want, but it's a, it's going to be black. That's what he'd say to people that wanted to buy his first vehicles. Model T. I'm using some white along with some Payne's gray, which is kind of a blue-black that's happening here. And I'm seeing some of the colors in here, too. Um, I just need a little highlight here. I'm kind of jumping around. You know how... Do you ever paint, paint by numbers? Sometimes I approach a painting and say, okay, I have this color on my brush, so I'll just skip around and use it where I see it. And that's actually a pretty good tip. All right, you're, you're about 12 minutes. All right, teach. well, I'm going to have to stop painting right now. We're going to do this at least one more time. But I did promise that I was going to show you, um, from last segment, we talked about show and tell, and I showed you a painting that I had done for a client and said, I'll let you know when we see this, when I have the next one. This was the painting I showed you. And I just wanted to show you its companion piece, which is this one right here. Almost finished, not quite, but almost finished. I think they go beautifully together. I'd probably hang them more this way. I'd probably hang them more this way, a few inches apart. What do you think, Dr. John? Yeah, looking good. I love that color. Colors. Lots of beautiful, warm, warm and cool colors. Purples and red oranges. Fun to paint. Today's pearls of wisdom are from Pablo Picasso. He was a crazy man. Um, lived to be 82, but he said, everyone is the age he has decided on. And I have decided to remain 30. I'm with you, Pablo. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, folks. We appreciate it. Be well, be safe. See you next time. Bye-bye.